Hey everyone, Nick Diobertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be talking about exploring the parameter space through sensitivity analysis. So this is our first lecture out of this segment. And this segment is really focused on, we've built out a basic model. Now, how do we get a deeper understanding of the problem than what the initial model says? So, so far, um, you take some inputs, you put them into your model, and you get some outputs. But that's just kind of one picture of what could happen based on the initial values of those inputs. And certainly, you can kind of change around the inputs and see what happens to the outputs, but that's not a very systematic way of looking at the different values that there could be for the inputs. Um, we can get a much deeper understanding of the whatever situation that we're modeling if we really explore all the different possible values that the inputs could be and how that affects the output from the model. So that's one of the big reasons why I've been really emphasizing that in a model, everything has to be linked together from the inputs all the way to the outputs. Changing your inputs should make a change in your outputs, and you shouldn't have to be redoing a bunch of manual steps to get there. If you just kind of hard code everything, that's just a calculation and not a model because it's rigid and you can't change around the inputs and see how the outputs change in response to that. And when you just do a calculation, you get one answer and it's for a certain set of inputs. Maybe they're reasonable, maybe they're not. But when you build a model, you set it up so it can take any inputs. And so all of a sudden you're able to do much more exploration of the possibilities of the real world and incorporate that into your decision making. So here's a quick visualization of what we're going to be doing with parameter exploration. So the basic concept is we're going to run the model multiple times. We're going to give the model different inputs each time, and we're going to collect the outputs from each of those runs of the model and keep those associated with whatever inputs caused the outputs. And then we're going to take all these uh, inputs, outputs, all that information, and put it into some kind of visualization that is easier to understand than the raw numbers. Because very quickly, this becomes a lot of numbers to deal with, and so it's very difficult to uh, parse through all that as the reader of the model unless there's an effective visualization to tie it all together. So we'll talk about three different ways in this class to explore the, the parameters or the inputs to the model and how those affect the outputs. So the first one that we're going to be looking at in this lecture is sensitivity analysis. We are also going to cover scenario analysis and Monte Carlo simulation as the other two methods. So the differences between the three, so sensitivity analysis um, we're going to look at basically the full range of inputs that we think are reasonable for the model and see what full range of outputs we can get from that. So in a lot of ways, it's a good way to kind of stress your model and see if we take things all the way to uh, as far as these inputs could reasonably go, what happens to our outcome? Um, Whereas uh, the other methods, we have scenario analysis and Monte Carlo simulation. So scenario analysis is about, as the name implies, trying to come up with specific realistic scenarios and building those into your model. Uh, so very commonly, that might be something like a good economy, normal economy, bad economy scenario, uh, and try to set all the values of the inputs to align with whatever the situation is. And so you get a few different realistic outcomes out of your model under different conditions. And then the, the third um, that we're looking at is Monte Carlo simulation. And Monte Carlo simulation 
is similar to uh, sensitivity analysis and that we're throwing a bunch of different inputs at the model, uh, not only just a certain few that we've chosen for scenario analysis. What the difference with Monte Carlo simulation is, is that the inputs are actually random. You set probability distributions for each of the inputs and each run of the model the inputs are drawn from those probability distrib distributions randomly. And then you take all these randomized values of the inputs, pass them into the model, and you get your output. And what that allows you to do is you can actually get a probability distribution of the outputs from the model as well, which can give you a good understanding of the risk of your result. So let me give kind of a concrete example of using all three of these methods because they are similar to some extent and a lot of students wonder why why do we do all three why why is one not enough so you could think about um a capital budgeting model where you've got some project you have some initial investment on the project and then uh that project produces some cash flows and ultimately um you're going to calculate an MPV of this project as a result and use that MPV to decide whether to take on the project. So you've built out your model, you've got the basic result and say you, you've got a positive MPV. And so it looks like, okay, we wanna take this project, but let's try to get a little better understanding of it before we jump the gun on that. So then you can do uh, sensitivity analysis and sensitivity analysis, you can say, well, uh, let's look at the full range of what's reasonable for the discount rate. Uh, maybe it's as low as 4%, but maybe it's as high as 12%. And then uh, you kind of space out, you know, try 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, and see what NPV comes out when you use all these different discount rates. And there you may see oh, well, our baseline discount rate of 7%, it was MPV positive, but really if it goes up to 9%, all of a sudden the MPV is negative. So we need to really carefully consider the discount rate. Have we accurately estimated the discount rate or is it really higher? If it's higher, all of a sudden this becomes not so attractive. Um, then thinking about scenario analysis, we can go again with the example of the bad economy good economy, normal economy cases. So you might say that in the good economy, you're going to have higher demand. Uh, it's going to be um, a lower discount rate because it's easier to raise capital. Um, and just kind of lining up all the different inputs into the model, what all makes sense in a good economy, putting that all together, running the model, and you get your good economy NPV. And then you do the same thing for bad economy. Okay, now it's going to be high discount rate. We're going to have low demand. Um, and so now we get our bad economy MPV. So then you can understand uh, with these kind of realistic scenarios, well, this this model says we got positive MPV in the normal and the good economy case. But if the economy goes bad, all of a sudden, this is not an MPV positive project anymore. So then you have to think about, you know, what's the chance of us going into a recession? If it's high enough, then maybe we don't actually take this project. Then lastly, we have Monte Carlo simulation. And for Monte Carlo simulation, we assign distributions to each of these inputs. So that's saying maybe, okay, the discount rate is 7% by default, but we're going to say now it is drawn from a normal distribution with a mean of 7% and standard deviation of 2%. So one time you run the model, you may get 7%. Another time you may get 9 you may get 11 you may get 4 etc. Each time you run the model, it's pulling a different value based off that normal distribution. And you do the same thing for all the other inputs. You do that for the demand. Uh, whatever other inputs are going into the model, all of them now have probability distributions. And then you go and you run this model a lot of times, usually a 1,000 or 10,000 times. Um, and you get all the MPVs out as a result. And so what that gets you, as long as you picked reasonable distributions 
for your inputs, you now have a good estimate of the distribution of your MPV. So that allows you to say, oh, well, even though the baseline MPV is positive, maybe uh, through that analysis, you can determine that it's actually a high risk project where on average, the MPV is positive, but 90% of the time, it actually ends up negative. It's only in those 10% of the time that you have a very high MPV and it makes up for it, and that allows the average to be positive. But the majority of the time, it's a negative MPV project. So then that um, really comes into the decision-making process of how much risk are we willing to take on with this project? Do we have plenty of sufficient capital such that it doesn't matter if this project fails, okay, well then, yeah, we can go with uh, this positive MPV, let's take it. But if you're capital constrained, all of a sudden it becomes a more difficult decision because of the large risk involved in the project. So all of these different considerations you would not have gotten by just building out the initial capital budgeting model. It's only through exploring the parameter space with these different methods that we can get a much, much richer understanding of the problem that we're trying to solve. So next time we're going to come back and get into the theory of sensitivity analysis and what it looks like to carry that out. So thanks for listening and see you next time.